The making of masumi sake starts with the planting of the rice. Today is the planting of a sake rice variety called Miyama Nishiki, which originated in Masumi's home prefecture of Nagano. As usual, some of Masumi's staff have turned out to help. While it's easy to say that sake is made from rice, not all rice has the same quality or character. The character of the sake depends on what kind of rice was used to make it. One month later, a contingent of Masumi's workers have traveled to southwest Japan to help the farmers plant another kind of rice, Yamara Nishiki. This variety is known as the king of sake rice, and the Yamara Nishiki grown in this district is coveted by sake makers throughout Japan. Masumi believes that great sake starts with high quality rice so it only buys rice whose quality and source is well known. That is why maintaining good relations with the rice growers is so important. Masumi's hometown is Suwa, surrounded by the peaks of the Yatsugatake range and the misty Kirigamine highlands of central Nagano prefecture, and nestled in an 800-meter high basin centered on beautiful Lake Suwa. Novelist Takeshi Kaiko once wrote an essay about Suwa called Ice Fishing is Winter's Hanami. In the essay, Kaiko wrote, the sake that was standard fare at the inn was surprisingly delicious. I asked for the name, and they told me it was Masumi. When I returned to Tokyo, I told everyone that they make excellent sake up there in Suwa. The sake that so impressed the connoisseur novelist is the product of an environment blessed with fresh air, pure water, fierce winters, and cool summers. It is sake born of a culture rich with sacred shrines and ancient festivals, and it owes its quality to the inquisitive, industrious spirit of Suwa's people. Founded in the year 1662, Masumi was named after the Masumi Mirror, or Mirror of Truth, a national treasure enshrined at the Great Suwa Shrine. Masumi has been carrying on the tradition of brewing fine sake for over 350 years. Pass through the curtain of our Suwa brewery and you enter our brewery shop, Sela Masumi. You'll find all our Masumi products, a quiet tasting salon, and a variety of ceramics, pottery, and tableware associated with the sake culture. By mid-September, the Miyama Nishiki rice fields in Nagano are yellowing, the grains weigh heavily on the stalks, and harvest is approaching. Sake rice like Miyama Nishiki and Yamada Nishiki have larger grains and less protein than table rice. While protein makes table rice more flavorful when eaten, it can result in bitter and harsh flavors when made into sake. Sake rice grains have a core of pure starch called shimpaku. This core is dotted with air pockets, which aids in the growth of the koji rice mold that is used to turn the starch into the sugar needed for fermentation. From mid-September, truckloads of Nagano's Miyama Nishiki and Hito Gokochi rice are delivered every day. Hyogo Prefecture's Yamada Nishiki rice starts coming in a few weeks later. Masumi selects only high-quality rice from trusted growers and does all the polishing in its own mill. The purpose of polishing is to remove the unwanted outer layers of proteins and fats and to expose the inner core of pure starch. The more you polish, the finer, lighter, and cleaner the sake becomes. So the amount of polishing, expressed as the percentage of rice remaining after polishing, is the main way that sake quality is classified.
Masumi's average polishing rate is 60% remaining. The polishing rate is only 40% remaining for our best Daiginjo, or super premium quality sake. Polishing so finely must be done carefully to avoid overheating and cracking the rice. It takes over 50 hours to polish to this degree. Like the rice, the water has a dramatic effect on the character of the sake. The water from Masumi's well is pure and relatively light in mineral content, which gives our sake a soft and smooth character. The mountains surrounding the Sua Basin are overflowing with the pure, clean water that is the lifeblood of fine sake. Masumi's brewing season runs for seven months, from October to April. The very best sake is brewed when the Sua Basin is at its coldest, in January and February. After the rice flour has been washed off the polished rice, it's ready for soaking. The soaking time is adjusted depending on the polishing rate, how the rice will be used, and the temperature of the water. Times are controlled down to the second, so this job must be done with one eye on the stopwatch. The rice soaking today is Yamada Nishiki, polished to 40% for a super premium sake. The washing time is two minutes, and the soaking is seven minutes, 50 seconds, for a total time of nine minutes and 50 seconds. Rice that has been polished so finely absorbs water very quickly, and if soaked for just a little too long, it can no longer be steamed to perfection. At 7.30 the next morning, the carefully soaked rice is added to the rice steamer. Super premium sake is steamed in a simple koshiki steamer for one hour. Standard table sake is steamed in a rice steaming machine, also for about one hour. The freshly steamed rice is shoveled out of the steamer and spread on trays laid out on the brewery floor to cool. To ensure proper fermentation, the rice must be steamed in a way that results in a firm outer surface and a soft inner core. The master brewer kneads the rice with his fingers to check consistency. Freshly steamed rice emerges from the steaming machine. え、
The Koji room has thick walls paneled with cedar. It is designed to keep warmth and humidity in and unwanted bacteria out. The temperature inside the Koji room is a balmy 28 degrees C. In the Koji room, Koji mold spores are sprinkled on steamed rice and the mold is allowed to grow. The Koji mold produces an enzyme called amylase, which acts like a pair of chemical scissors that slowly snipped the long starch molecules into smaller molecules of simple sugar called glucose. Then the sake yeast consumes this glucose sugar and produces alcohol. In a nutshell, this is how rice is made into sake. It is said that if you can make good koji, then 70% of the work is done. That is why Masumi insists on making koji by hand. At Masumi's breweries, about three tons of rice is steamed every day during the production season. Of that three tons, about 20% is brought into the koji room and made into koji. The warm rice is spread on a special table called a toko. When the rice is dried out a bit, the koji mold spores are sprinkled over it. The powder-like spores will float away on the slightest breeze, so this work is done very quietly and calmly. The rice is wrapped in layers of cloth and bedded down in the high temperature and humidity of the koji room. This is the beginning of the koji making process, which will last for 50 hours over two days and nights. About five hours after spreading the koji spores, the brewery workers unwrap the rice and mix it to break up lumps and to release excess heat and moisture. By the next morning, the temperature of the koji has risen again and it is time to separate the batch into small wooden boxes called koji buta. This allows for more careful control of temperature and humidity. The koji boxes are stacked in precise rows against the walls of the koji room. After about six hours, the koji has generated more heat, so the boxes are shuffled inside and outside and up and down to regulate temperature. Three hours later, the koji in each box is remixed and formed into a mound. A depression is made at the center, like a small volcano. This shape will allow heat and moisture to dissipate evenly. At 10 in the evening, 
heat and moisture once again need to be released. Like monks tending a Zen garden, the brewers slowly rake their fingers through the koji rice to make a wave pattern that helps to dry the koji evenly. The brewers use all their finely tuned senses to check the color, fragrance, and texture of the koji. Just after noon on the third day, the finished koji is taken out of the warm koji room into the cold, dry brewery. Swirling wave patterns are made in the koji to promote drying and cooling, which will stop the koji from growing further. The koji mold has grown to the very center of the rice kernels, and each kernel is now loaded with the enzymes that will turn starch into sugar. The finished koji waits to be added to the yeast starter on the next day. Sake yeast plays the leading role in alcohol fermentation. The first step is to create a robust yeast culture called a yeast starter. Yeast are a mere 5 to 8 microns in length. They eat sugar and turn it into alcohol. However, wild yeast are not very good at producing alcohol. In the old days, when brewers used the wild yeast that happened to be in the brewery, there were often problems with fermentation and with the quality of the resulting sake. Finally, near the end of the Meiji era, at the beginning of the 20th century, the science behind sake production was understood, and new yeast strains were isolated which quickly improved sake quality. This marble plaque hanging in the Sua Brewery commemorates the discovery here in 1946 of a superior yeast variety. In that year, Masumi swept all of the top prizes in the National Sake Contest which prompted a visit by Dr. Shoichi Yamada of the National Research Institute of Brewing. Dr. Yamada named the new strain Yeast No. 7, and the Institute made it available to all brewers. Even a half century later, Yeast No. 7 is still used by a majority of Japan sake makers. In a small tank, the brewers add water, koji rice, lactic acid to keep out bacteria, sake yeast, and finally, steamed rice. An hour later, a potent solution of enzymes from the koji has collected in a tube at the center of the starter, and the brewers spread the solution around the tank to help turn the starch of the steamed rice into sugar. The yeast consume this sugar and multiply rapidly. Keeping strict control of temperature and cleanliness, the brewers produce a robust yeast culture in about 14 days. In the end, one milliliter drop of the yeast culture will contain about 200 million living yeast cells. Steamed rice, koji rice, yeast starter, all the ingredients are ready to begin the main sake fermentation. In the snowy mountains above Sua, our second brewery in Fujimi is also ready for main sake fermentation.
The yeast starter is moved to a larger tank and koji, steamed rice, and water are added to create the fermentation mash. However, adding the full amount at once would weaken the yeast culture, so it is instead added in three stages over four days. Gradually increasing the volume of the mash in three stages is one of the fundamentals of good sake brewing. After the final addition, the mash contains from 2.5 to 3 tons of steamed rice and about 1.3 times that amount of water. At this point, alcohol fermentation begins in earnest. Fermentation takes about 24 days for standard sake. Fermentation for super premium sake is done at a lower temperature and takes over 30 days. The most important element during mash fermentation is temperature control. If the temperature of the mash is allowed to rise, the yeast would produce alcohol too rapidly, making it impossible to produce sake with the proper balance of alcohol, flavor, and fragrance. The brewers restrict the temperature of the mash to between 6 degrees and 13 degrees C by running coolant around the outside of the tank, thus extending the fermentation time. Several times a day, the master brewer checks the fragrance and flavor of the mash and keeps a watchful eye on the shape and size of the bubbles. The master brewer says, making sake is about nurturing living organisms, so you have to give it loving care. When the alcohol content of the mash reaches 18%, Fermentation is complete, and it is time to filter the mash to extract the sake. Filtering, or pressing, is performed to separate the clear liquid sake from the white, undissolved rice solids. Filter machines use compressed air to gently press one tank's worth of mash through cloth-covered plates. Out flows a glittering golden liquid. Six long weeks after the rice was washed, freshly filtered sake is finally born. あ、いいよね。えっと、長野県さん、人心地と宮間錦、精米杯55%。はい。ああ、いい酒、いい酒ですね。美味しい。どうもありがとう。Masumi's Super Premium Daiginjo Sake is pressed by hand using two traditional methods. In tub filtering, called Fune Shibori, the mash is poured into cloth bags that are then cleverly folded and stacked in a deep tub. Drip filtering is used for the very best Daiginjo, intended for national competition. The cloth bags of mash are hung inside an empty tank and left to drip on their own. As each drop accumulates in the tank, the heavenly fragrance of fresh Daiginjo sake fills the brewery. In this way, brewing continues at Masumi until April.
Master Brewer Nass says sake making is a lot more scientific than people imagine. 昔はの人はその勘でそのそれぞれの工程こうんここはこういう作業をしなきゃいけないとかあのまあ教えられとか続けてきた作業っていっぱいあるんですけれどもそれがその今になってそのいろいろ科学的にねあこういった意味があったんだとかあのそれぞれの作業性の意味っていうかそういうのが分かってるきたっていうかその。科学的に証明されてきたっていうのが結構あるものですから、そういった科学的なデータっていうのもあるっていう酒造りには必要なので、まあそういったことを言ったんだと思うんですけどね。After the sake is filtered, it is moved to a storage tank, and then most sake is pasteurized by heating to 65 degrees C. Heating the sake stabilizes its quality by eliminating bacteria. And stopping the action of enzymes, the pasteurized sake is then left to mature in tank for several months. On the other hand, some types of sake are left unpasteurized to preserve their fresh young character. This type, called namazake, is stored in tanks refrigerated to three degrees C. Pasteurization and refrigeration are the only methods used to stabilize sake. Preservatives are never added. あの我々、えー、のお酒をお扱いいただいているその流通の方々ですとかあるいはレストランの方々ですとかあああのたまに蔵を見ていただくこともありますけどもこんなに手をかけてたのって皆さんもやっぱりびっくりされます、えー、とワインにしてもそれからビール作りにしてもですねそれぞれ、えー、複雑な工程があって難しいポイントがたくさんあって大変だとは思うんですけれども日本酒はあの数あるお酒の中でもですねととりわけ製造工程が複雑だと思いますねこれは我々のご先祖様がそれこそ 2,000 年かけてずっとこうあの改良に改良を重ねてきて今があるわけですけれども、えー、平行副発酵っていう独特な発酵のさせ方をしますのでものすごく複雑です。で、えー、使う微生物もですね微生物の数もあの何種類もの微生物がこの酒造りに関わっています。で基本的に我々のあの仕事というのはその生き物を育てる仕事ですのでやはりこれはその手抜きはできませんしそれから愛情をきちんと注いでやらないと生き物を育たないといい酒もできないと、まあ、そういう理屈じゃないかなというふうに思っています。ご承知の通りの長野県は、えー、水も素晴らしいしそれから空気も澄んでいますし、えー、冬の我々が酒を作る冬の間の気温も低温できちんと安定してくれていますでこんなにですね酒造りに適した場所っていうのはあ全国探してもそれほどないというふうに思っているんですけれどもしかしそのじゃあ自然環境が整ってさえいればですねいい酒ができるかっていうとそういうわけでもなくてやっぱり人の力っていうのは大きいと思いますね。えー、まあ新州人仇っていうのかあるいは諏訪人気質っていうのかその、えー、非常にこうあの細かい点にまで気を配る、えー、完全無欠主義っていいますかそういうものを持っているで去年よりもちょっとでもいいからいい作を作りたいみたいな、えー、向上心も非常に強いこうそういうあの気質を持った人たちが朝倉の中で、えー、微生物と向き合ってですねえー、酒造りをやってくれている、まあ、これが真澄の,の味の源泉になってるんじゃないかなというふうに私は思います。Every year in July, the brewers gather in the midsummer heat to assess the quality of the sake that was brewed that past winter. Each storage tank is tapped and samples are collected for tasting. The brewers assess the overall progress of maturation and strictly check every aspect of the sake for possible flaws. From rice harvest quality to how the koji was made, from soaking times to mash fermentation temperature, no point is left unexamined. The brewers debate what adjustments should be made to improve the quality of the stored sake, and they also begin shaping a strategy. To further improve quality during the next brewing season. Sake is so good that our own brewers want to open the tap and drink it themselves. 
sake so good that it always has a place at gatherings of our family and friends. Sake so good that we offer it to sake lovers across the world with pride. Making sake that good is why we work so hard. These words from Masumi's president reflect his family's 350-year history of making fine sake and the Sua people's enthusiasm for making it better every time. <laughs>